So what happens when the DNA of two animal groups combines? It's called hybridization. With the vastness of the animal kingdom, just think of the possible outcomes. Imagine mixing your two favorite animals together into one, creating the ultimate hybrid masterpiece of your dreams. No matter how fun it is to think about, scientists have actually come a long way in the hybridization field. Results may vary. Are you ready to mix it up? 15 hybrid animals created by scientists you won't believe exist. Super Cow Over the years, cattle have gone through numerous genetic changes in nature and at the hand of human experiment. The variety and industry are so huge and vital to human society that there are apps you can download to help identify, keep in compliance, and register any new addition to your herd with just a few taps. Pretty amazing, right? It seems Apple was really on to something when they came up with the marketing slogan, yeah, there's an app for that. As its namesake suggests, the legendary Belgian blue cow originates from Belgium and is considered a super cow. The blue refers to its blue sheen that dances across its coat when the light hits it. This amazing hybrid cattle is revered for its well-muscled build, docile temperament, and hardy resilience. These cows are even referred to as meatheads on account of their bulging muscles. In fact, this is one of the few species on Earth that commonly gets so ripped that they develop what's known as double muscles. Scientifically speaking, it means that muscles form on top and in conjunction with the other muscles for enhanced strength. Cattle like this can become so muscled that it looks obese. On average, a cattle breed of a similar size would weigh around 2,100 pounds. The enormous Belgian Blue, on the other hand, weighs in at around 2,700 pounds when compared to that of the same age, size, and sex. Because muscle weighs more than fat, these monsters really weigh a ton. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. The molecules of DNA in each of an animal's cells hold instructions. These guide what an animal looks like, how it behaves, even the sound it makes. DNA is literally every creature's personal blueprint. So when you look at a hybrid animal, like in this picture, the first thing you think is, this thing looks like a few things. With floppy bunny ears, pinkish pig-like skin, a snout like a cow, and eyes and eyebrows that are practically human, we could go on. This creature seems to be a mashup of many things, but it couldn't possibly be part bunny, part pig, part cow, part human. Maybe it's a mix-up gone wrong. A DNA disaster. Can you explain what this creation might have originated as? What would you call this hybrid animal? Let your imagination go wild in the comments and use the hashtag sweet topic when you do. Human ear mouse. You could see the famous mouse in a textbook or a television series, a mouse with a human ear on its back, but did you ever understand why? Most people just assumed it was genetically engineered or deformed or the result of mad scientist experiments. To be fair, the last one could still be under debate. It all started 20 years ago at Harvard University when the Surgeon Brothers Vacanchi, along with a MIT engineer, dabbled with techniques to create human body parts in a lab environment. They purposefully implanted the shape of a human ear on the back of a mouse as part of a research to better understand how they could help grow body parts for humans. They published their results in 1997 to what can only be considered viral attention, though the term referring to internet popularity had yet to be coined. After BBC aired a documentary on tissue engineering, the world truly got a first glance at the weird creature. They dubbed it the Vacanti Mouse after the brother surgeons responsible. While it brought much backlash, it also excited scientists for the possibilities. Spider goat. What crazy scientist thought it would be a good idea to mix the genes of goats and spiders? Someone take that person's science license away. This experiment was an eerie and highly controversial news story. Essentially, researchers were attempting to utilize the superior strength of spider webs on a larger scale. They needed a new medium for which to produce these large quantities of web material. Since spiders produce it in such small quantities, they thought by putting spider genes in goats, their profits would soar. A select group of goats were selected and transplanted with a spider's silk making genes. The project's main focus was to transform milk into something undrinkable and in the long run, sellable. 
This is where things get a little iffy. The host company in charge of the experiment quickly went bankrupt after starting the project and sold off the majority of its intellectual property, including the goats of subject. The Canada Agriculture Museum in Ottawa purchased them and to this day, the project has remained veiled from public view. Do they have their own secret stash of the world's most robust material somewhere hidden away in the museum? Or was the earlier controversy of the project too tremendous and the museum shut the program down? Spider silk is highly in demand because its properties have long boggled experts' minds who have been unable to replicate such a human-made material. From its elasticity, biocompatibility, strength, and resistance to extreme temperature variations, spider silk is considered one of the most robust materials you can find. <laughs> Glowfish Many insects, like fireflies, glimmer and flash as they flit through their mating dances illuminating their ends and at the same time managing to transform a summer evening into a magical night. While the bioluminescence traits that enable these bugs to glow, the reason for their famously titled lightning bug creates wonder in humans, it's also a common feature found throughout the animal world, especially in marine biology. Bioluminescence is defined as the light that occurs from the reaction of two chemicals living within an organism. Those chemicals are luciferin and either luciferase or photoprotein. While lights and sparkles might just be for show to humans, in the animal kingdom, it's a powerful tool. Depending on the creature utilizing it, it can be used for multiple purposes. As instanced above with the lightning bug, they glow for mating purposes. Some insects glow as a predatory method to lure prey to within reach. Others light their way in the never-ending darkness that is the bottom of the sea. Human pig. Mixing any animal with a human just shouldn't be done. There are too many questions that need answers. Although a pig has many compatible attributes with human DNA, it doesn't mean it should be tried. If you're starting to get shivers along the length of your spine as you observe, don't worry, you aren't alone. Look into those creatures' eyes and what do you see? It's said that the eyes are viewpoints to the soul and these things look tortured if you ever saw something. The photos accompanying the news drop were later confirmed fake, but the experiment was genuine. The picture was meant to elicit the kind of ethical fears protesters wanted. The actual embryo from which this test was conducted remained an embryo and was marked in the books as striking failure. The embryo itself doesn't look like much, save for beneath a microscope to those with the know-how to understand these things. Experts at the Salk Institute in California have been credited with the experiment and are said to continue on with the lessons learned with a new experiment. At least you know now, if you see half pig, half humans running around, where the heck that monster came from? The science community is split on the project. The fact no successful tests have been reported are a troubling sign of its progress. The program may have already been secretly dissolved. Gen Pet Ever wonder if you'd be able to walk into a supermarket and head into an aisle where you can pick up a packaged-like toy pet and bring it home that very day? If that sounds like something out of fiction, start getting that jaw ready for some droppage. The idea behind the gin pet is as mentioned before. A person can walk into a store, grab their new pet off the shelf, and unwrap it at home. Once out of the package, the pet is completely organic and living. At least, that's the goal. According to the company, gen pets are genetically engineered and actually manufactured companions from a dream or maybe a nightmare. While the website did indeed have a store up and running, you can never actually order one of the products on account of the company was still in the process of developing their plastic packaged pet. Turns out the whole thing was a passion project by a Canadian artist who wanted to bring attention to the concept of bioengineering and how they feel about what that science might lead to. It certainly did the trick and had many people frowning with disgust at the notion. Enviro pig. Like all animals, pigs need phosphorus to make DNA, build cell membranes, and transport energy. Pigs, however, can't digest phytate, a phosphorus heavy molecule in grains. To rectify this issue, farmers typically fortify pig feed with pure phosphate or phytase, an enzyme that breaks usable phosphate off phytate. Pigs excrete nearly all of the phosphorus they eat, and this washes into the ocean, enters the atmosphere, and causes a lot of environmental damage. Combined with how many pigs there actually are in the world, 
and there's a pretty large problem there. The released phosphorus feeds bacteria and algae creating oxygen dead zones, and quite literally, this is a significant source of major marine wildlife deaths. To solve this problem, scientists have bioengineered a pig that can digest phytate on its own. This changes nothing about the pig other than its ability to digest this material. It could change the face of farming and environmental concerns. Sturtlefish Every so often, if unrelated sperm float near sturgeon eggs, the eggs accidentally take it in and begin to spawn baby fish without actually being fertilized. To see if this was possible with the endangered Russian sturgeon eggs, which is a significant source of much of the world's caviar, experts decided to introduce paddlefish sperm and see what would happen. In the experiment, some of the sperm were irritated to damage the genetic material inside. But in another group, the scientists mixed sturgeon eggs with untreated, healthy paddlefish sperm in a countercase study. Past attempts to mix the two species failed to result in viable offspring, and the list of differences between the fish suggests an inability to breed them together. If it would have worked, it could have saved the species from its ongoing progress to extinction. <laughs> Featherless chickens Why are those chickens walking around naked? It turns out they're just walking in their birthday suits. And it's actually a specific type of hybrid chicken, and its nakedness indeed has a purpose. Also called the nude chicken, the real purpose behind this human-bred creature was to create a chicken that could produce cheaper, easier, and more quantity than its feather counterparts. To sum it all up, it was humans trying to figure out another way to cut down on certain processes to increase profits. The scientists responsible for its creation say this breed is not genetically modified, but the result of a 50-year effort using only natural breeding methods. Ethics groups were quick to jump in the conversation and state that featherless variants suffer more than feathered ones do. For example, they're more susceptible to parasites, mosquito bites, and sun skin complications. On the other end of the argument, they say these breeds pose no more risk to humans than the feathered types, at least in terms of consumption. They taste and produce the same quality of meat. The bonus is supposed to be that they grow faster, the meat is lower in fat, they require less food to survive, and are considered better for the environment since there's no need for plucking and discarding of their feathers. Don't think plucking is an environmental issue? Well, you'd be wrong. With the massive quantity of chickens being farmed and plucked to feed the masses, there's a huge pollution problem in bodies of water. Kunga The legendary Kunga was revealed by archaeologists recently, part donkey, part wild ass, it's become the world's oldest known hybrid animal thanks to human intervention. This ancient equine lived about 4,500 years ago and was believed to be a cross between a donkey and a hemipede, a type of Asiatic wild ass. Horses didn't appear in this region of Asia until 4,000 years ago, centuries after their first domestication in Russia. Experts believe kungas were created for warfare as they could pull wagons effectively. Coaxing donkeys into dangerous situations is hard, and no Asiatic wild ass can be tamed. It would make sense that the combination of the two would provide a more stable war animal. <laughs> Human hybrid Science has done it. They've successfully grown monkey embryos containing human cells. We've already mentioned the multiple ways why science should be careful mixing human genes with animals, but let's continue. While the scientific world exploded with applause and brought rise to even more questions than before, on the other hand, ethics committees weren't too enthused on the scientists' success. According to the reports, the project team injected the monkey embryos with human stem cells. For months, they observed and jotted down all happenings. Of note, they observed human and monkey cells first divide, but then grow together in a petri dish, meaning acceptance of the gene code. Of all the subjects, at least three embryos survived for 19 days. The overall lesson learned was that every embryo containing human cells proliferates and differentiates to a different extent. It's hard to mix with any other species and survive whatsoever. Any number of days is progress. A development biologist hailing from a biological studies institute was in charge of the project and reported its official findings when concluded. Researchers hope that with this research, human-animal hybrids, being called chimeras, could provide better subjects and results in the testing of experimental drugs and growing of human organs. You can see where the ethics issue starts to come into play. <coughs> Jellyfish rabbits 
As if science wasn't getting weird enough, they have now successfully bred glow-in-the-dark bunnies. The reason why is cooler than it might sound. As part of an extensive effort to find better treatments for life-threatening illnesses, a team of scientists have successfully bred glow-in-the-dark rabbits, and all to prove a point. While glowing in the dark might not seem important for a rabbit, the point they were making was, their experiments produced two glowing rabbits out of a litter of eight. They went from being ordinary, adorable, fluffy white bunnies to glowing nuclear green. The rabbits were born in captivity at the University of Istanbul for an important project. The experiment continues as part of a collaboration between the universities in Turkey and Hawaii to demonstrate that a genetic manipulation technique works effectively when applied properly. Though the specific color is more cosmetic than scientific in the glowing case, the point was that they now can genetically alter elements like color of hair, if they wish. In other words, they made them glow in the dark simply for the purpose of moving forward with the research and to show the investors that it was easily capable with enough funding. The rabbits are no worse for the wear, so they say. They of course can't ever be in the wild again on account of their new luminescence and attraction for prey. Liger Though ligers may seem like a magical creature ripped straight from the pages of your favorite fantasy novel, they're actually an extremely tortured creature, and all is a result of human experimentation for the sake of shock value. A liger is born from breeding a male lion and a tigress. If the male and female roles were reversed, the animal would be a tigon. There's a difference. Both are equally horrifying for the creatures of question. Since lions and tigers don't exist together naturally in the wild, it's not even possible for one to meet another outside of human intervention. The two species actually mating cannot occur. The inhuman practice of breeding the hybrid animals is conducted within a harsh, captive environment at disreputable carnies. They don't care about the animal's well-being whatsoever, so long as it makes them a buck in the process. These business owners' intent is not to care for the animal, but to produce a freak of nature that knowledgeable people will pay a premium to go see in one of their disrepair parks. The marketing technique works primarily the same way as circus and freak shows do. Unfortunately for the animals, in this case, it is all accomplished without the animal's consent or want. All of this is just humans trying to play God for when they think is lucrative. These hybrids almost always suffer from birth defects and die young. Kama. Can you guess the hybrid animal of question here? This spectacular llama camel species could change the way people journey across the desert, so it might be one of the best examples of hybrid breeding gone well. The two species had, until now, been naturally separated by 30 million years. The first ever born was a kama named Rama, and now she has more family to share in all the joy of the new species. And there are more on the way. These incredibly effective desert striders are the future over the traditional Kama for numerous reasons. Rama, the first of her kind, is now 10 years old and shares the spotlight with three new brothers and sisters named Camilla, Jamila, and Rocky. The incredible Kamas were conceived through artificial insemination over multiple years of attempting to do so, and Dr. Lulu Skidmore, the project's director, says that more than 50 trials to cross llama eggs with camel sperm were conducted, resulting in 15 conceptions and six of which have led to live births. Two didn't make it past the third week. <laughs> Waffen A male false killer whale once shared an aquatic enclosure with a typical female Atlantic bottlenose dolphin, and the love story that ensued created an entire new species. It wasn't the first time such a species shared a tank with no issues. The false killer whale species is not a whale at all, but a species of dolphin. In fact, the world's third largest, the aquatic creature duo was part of a water show that was gaining great attention on account of their relationship and chemistry. The pair were much more than just tank mates, they were partners. Eventually, they mated and gave birth to the one and only Kaikamalu. The world's first known surviving waffin and a perfect 50-50 genetic split of both species. Although scientists know that false killer whales and bottlenose dolphins often swim together in the wild, mating between them is a brand new thing at least one that's been observed. Caretakers at the park reported that the moment the Waffen was born, it was apparent what had happened, though they had no idea until the day of the birth. Scientists believed the massive size difference between the species would prevent mating. Sometimes what science comes up with can be really fascinating, and other times it can be a nightmare. 
The thing about science is that it's completely unforgiving. Once the knowledge is out there, anyone can use it, and an experiment gone bad can have permanent consequences, as with weapons of war. No matter what science is bringing us, it's up to humans to see it's used right and for the better of all life on the planet, including Mother Nature. Hybrid animals like on today's list are only the beginning of what lies in store for us in the future. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get all our lit content delivered right to your inbox.